This is Valley News Live at 4. Here's a look at today's top four at four. We now know the name of the man involved in a stabbing in Moorhead over the weekend. Moorhead police say 27 year old Juan Brown of Moorhead has been booked into the Clay County Jail on several charges. Brown is accused of stabbing a woman on Sunday in South Moorhead. Police say she's still in the hospital. Brown faces charges of first degree attempted murder, first degree assault, third degree criminal sexual conduct and felony domestic assault. And Beltrami County officials have found the body of a man whose car fell through the river uh, through the ice on Sunday. Deputies say they found the body on Monday evening at around 630 after two days of searching. The body was taken to the Midwest Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy. And Grand Forks County is moving on to its next stage of its COVID-19 vaccine rollout, meaning seniors will be getting their shot soon. We'll have more on how you can get your vaccine coming up. And the FBI is warning you about armed protests at all 50 state capitals next week following the riot at the U.S. Capitol. Last Wednesday's events have led to dozens of arrests, a coronavirus outbreak in Congress, and Trump impeachment proceedings. We'll have the latest from Washington, D.C. coming up. And that wraps up today's Step Forward 4. Now let's get a first look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hey, Hutch. Kelly, thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. We have temperatures that are simply awesome. Near 40 in Grand Forks at this hour. A lot of 30s across northwest Minnesota as well. 40 in Jamestown. And look out to the west very carefully with me as we recenter this photo. You can take a look. Uh, that might be a water skier on Lake Sakakawea there. You have to look closely, but it's that warm. 54 degrees in Hedinger right now, passing high clouds. Uh, the only risk to our weather comes in the overnight hours. More on that in a little bit, but for the evening will be mild. Increasing high clouds will be the rule. The wind will be light. As we take a look at Grand Forks, we'll have a little bit more clear skies right now, but the clouds do build in. Temperatures will settle into the low 20s by the time we head to bed tonight at midnight. Friday remains a first alert weather day. The big transition in our weather, though, Cali, begins on your hump day tomorrow. Wednesday's forecast is coming up here in a, just a few minutes. I'll have details on rain and sleet and eventually snow here in a few moments. Thanks so much, Hutch. And seniors in Grand Forks can start getting their COVID vaccine soon. The health department and all true health system have finished vaccinating frontline health care workers, first responders and long term care residents and staff. That means they can move on to phase 1B. This phase begins with vaccinating people age 75 and older. The health department warns that vaccinating seniors could take several weeks. If you're over the age of 75 and you want to get your vaccine, contact the COVID hotline at the number on your screen. And the Towner County Sheriff's Office is searching for a man who stole a jar of charity money from a gas station. According to the Sheriff's Office, the man stole a benefit jar full of bills and coins from the Senex gas station in Kandu yesterday. The Sheriff's Office says this same man tried to return a bottle from off the shelf at Lake Slicker in Devil's Lake on January 10th. If you recognize this man or his vehicle, you're asked to contact the Towner County Sheriff's Office at the number on your screen. And Grand Forks police are notifying the public about a high risk sex offender that changed his address. They say Michael McGee now lives at 625 North 5th Street. McGee served time after a conviction of aggravated sexual assault. He's a high risk offender, meaning he's most likely to reoffend and he must register for a lifetime. And Minnesotans can now track the progress of the vaccine rollout in the state by checking out the vaccine data dashboard. As of today, the CDC promised more than 541,000 doses of the vaccine to Minnesota. Of those doses, more than 329,000 have been shipped to providers, along with over 100,000 doses shipped to pharmacies participating in the CDC Pharmacy Partnership Program. More than 140,000 Minnesotans have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine, and over 7,000 people have gotten all doses. You can find the dashboard on our website. That's Valley News Live. Com. And supporters of legalizing recreational marijuana in North Dakota are taking another run at the issue after failing to collect enough signatures to get it on the 2020 ballot. Secretary of State Al Jager says the group filed a new petition yesterday. If approved, backers would have one year to turn in around 27,000 valid signatures for a vote in November of 2022. Petition gatherers fell just shy of 24,000 signatures in last year's effort and blame the coronavirus pandemic. 
And the former Minneapolis police officer who kneeled on George Floyd's neck will be tried alone. Derek Chauvin will be tried separately from the three other former officers who were charged in George Floyd's death, according to court papers today. Chauvin was shown on video kneeling on the neck of George Floyd, who was black for several minutes back in May. In his ruling, the judge said it would be impossible to comply with social distancing guidelines if all four of the former police officers were tried at the same time. Chauvin's trial will be in March. And Governor Tim Walz plans to visit several American history monuments across Minnesota as part of a call for peace uh, following last week's attack at the U.S. Capitol. Governor Walz's first stop was at the Minnesota History Center in St. Paul today. Tomorrow he plans on going to southern Minnesota. And on Thursday he'll be visiting the Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Duluth. In a protest at the Minnesota State Capitol last Wednesday, the same day as the U.S. Capitol siege, didn't turn violent. But the threat was troubling enough for Minnesota State Patrol to move Governor Walz's son to a safer location. Yesterday afternoon, all 59 members of the House GOP signed a statement denouncing the violent rhetoric during the St. Paul protests. They joined Democrats in a calling for an investigation. And coming up on Valley News Live at 4, the nation's capital is preparing to host Joe Biden's inauguration despite terrorist threats. We'll have the latest from Washington, D.C. next. Today, we saw some high clouds early, sunshine through the midday, and gorgeous temperatures. We do have some big changes on the way. They begin tomorrow, but the greatest impacts will be here on your Friday, a first alert weather day. Details in your forecast are next.